Hey guys, so today I am going to talk about Pay Money Wubby. Pay Money Wubby has, I mean, he's basically the Logan Paul of Magic the Gathering. Uh, we all know what Logan Paul did to Pokemon. Pokemon literally went to the moon, right? And it was very much in the same format. You had an influencer. Uh, he had subscribers pay per card, or in this case, per pack. Um, but... You know, because this is an alpha starter, it's per card. And then he was able to go infinite using this strategy, which is the same one that Pay Money Wubby has been able to use. And it's been a great benefit for Magic the Gathering, especially if you have a older vintage collection. It's been probably the best thing that's ever happened to you in life. Card prices are skyrocketing. You know, always buy vintage. Uh, that's pretty much true in almost anything, right? Buy quality over quantity. No amount of new boxes will ever come to or even have the same growth rate as the older vintage. Same thing with wine. Um, same thing with coins. Same thing when things go up in price. Same thing with Pokemon, right? It will always be the Charizard first edition that goes up a ton in price, nothing else. Uh, same with Black Lotuses. Same with all this type of stuff. Very, very fascinating. So, uh, using the Logan Paul example, uh, Pay Money Wubby has basically done this very well. In the past few days, he's opened a ton of these alpha starters. And when I mean a ton, I mean he's opened three of them, which is a ton. The first one he opened was actually fake from Italy. And the second one he opened had a Island Rare, which is very unfortunate. It's probably one of the most unfortunate things that you can get in your pack. But Island was actually on the Rare Sheet. And wow. Yeah, that sucks. So he got an Island Rare. And he also got a Living Lands, which is less than $1,000. Like all the grades that he was using with PSA 10. Now, the second one, or the last one he opened was with another huge, huge internet YouTube celebrity, Penguin Zero. And out of those, he got a Thought Lace, which is not good, and a Mechanical Clockwork Guardian, something like that, also very not good. He's going to continue to open until he gets uh, what he wants, which is obviously Power 9, or probably, let's be more specific, Black Lotus. And I don't see him stopping, you know, to be quite frank with you. He's probably just going to keep going until he either cannot afford to open more or simply there's nothing, there's nothing left because uh, the prices are getting really, really, really high. Now back to the reason that this is so important for the Magic community, it should be pretty obvious to you that like, Influencers promoting card games is the fastest way for these card games to have and become worth a lot of money. And that's exactly what Pay Money Wubby is doing to the card game. Maybe unintentionally, maybe intentionally, I don't know. But the more of these he opens, the more people are going to want to buy. Especially if you actually have a real one. You know, many of the alpha starters, as we've seen, and beta starters and unlimited, they're fake. They're fake. They're repackaged. Uh, the, one of them had Wyvern cards. The other one didn't even have rares on them. You know? And even the ones that are real, what's the odds that they have Black Lotus? It's, it's you know, one in like a bazillion, right? It's hard to imagine uh, in today's society that, like, there's that many actual vintage sealed product that are real. Um, and he's basically shown to me that like vintage singles are probably a good investment, but vintage sealed, I, I don't know. I mean, he had Card Kingdom sell him one. I believe that one was fake or resealed. That was from Card Kingdom, I, I believe. I um, have to fact check that. But that's a big company. You know, these are huge companies that supposedly only do vintage collectibles. They need... Um, and there's not really a way, a, a good way for them to figure out, is this real, is this not? And that, to me, is very scary, right? Like, I, I don't know if I could sleep well at night, because if Pay Money Wobby opens it, 
not only did you sell him a fake, now your name is going to be plastered on the internet. And even if you're a lawyer or a business owner, like even if it's not your fault, your your life and your reputation has will take a drastic. It almost reminds me of collectible gurus and the fake first edition uh, cards he was trying to some, sell to dumb money. And Leanheart is there, and he can't tell if it's real or I don't even know why Leanheart would go. Uh, he can't tell if it's real or not. No one can tell. And then suddenly it was fake. And that's the thing of fake. You, you saw Logan Paul and BBC. They wrapped the damn thing. And they're like, oh, yeah, this case is real. And I mean, it's it's just so fascinating that all these experts, right? These people paid hundreds of thousands of dollars to verify all these items. They have no idea what the hell they're talking about. You, you If you have any, watch the uh, Logan Paul BBC part. Like, it was such a disaster, that Steve Hart guy. I Again, for the fact that you got to set a rep or somebody, man. Like, unless you're positive it's real, you got to send a rep. Because, I mean, he shows your face, he shows your expression, and obviously, you know, you're never, it's, it's like you're never going to recover from this from a professional. I mean, at that point, you're not even a professional anymore. And who actually determines who's a professional grader or sealed? So Pay Money Wubby is doing all the stuff that we are afraid to do, which is open sealed product, because he is a huge influencer, because he has the teeth to destroy or make careers just like the snap of a finger. And like he said um, on this break, that if you're not Pay Money Wubby and you open this deck, you're aft, right? And that's why so many people are afraid to open their sealed product, because I think in the back of their mind, they know that there is a 50-50 chance that it could be fake. You know, the more expensive your sealed product is, the less technology they probably use to open it. It's, because it's old, right? It's just literally sealed. I was opening Soul Forge, it's another game by Richard Garfield, and like, like it's super easy to reseal. They didn't make these games um, to be like collected for 30 years sitting sealed. They made these games to be opened. Right, and and I look at actually Soulforge is a very good example. You could probably take the Soulforge ceiling and then wrap some magic cards around it, and it would be the same thing. I'm not kidding. The Soulforge seal, which is another Richard Garfield game, I guess he decided to use the same company as his own magic game. I, that wouldn't surprise me if he used similar things. Um, that one was pretty ridiculous in my opinion, but. So pay money, Wabi. Um, the next Logan Paul, I think he is. And I think that's not a bad thing for us. I think it's something that is very good for us. Uh, in fact, I would uh, even say that, you know, pay money, Wabi, bringing his friends and family and whoever else, you know, his penguins, uh, bring them, man. All they're doing is making magic cards more and more expensive of a certain variety. Anyway, guys.